Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Topaz Labs updated Photo AI to version 2.4.1. With this release, they've made significant changes to the Photo AI workspace. In today's video, I'm going to give you a glimpse of this new workspace and explain how to use it. One thing I do want to mention very quickly is whenever I do these videos, just talking about some type of noise reduction application, uh, people have been asking me since Lightroom now has built in AI noise reduction, how does Lightroom's noise reduction compare to say Photo AI or Pure Raw 4 or No Noise AI or something like that? Well, I've decided to do a series of videos where I'll be comparing Lightroom's built-in AI noise reduction, they call it denoise, to the competition. Look for the first of those videos next week. Now, as I mentioned in today's video, we're just going to take a look at this latest release of Topaz Labs Photo AI version 2.4.1, and I have mentioned that the um, workspace is different. We're going to be using Photo AI as a Lightroom plugin, and the only reason why I'm doing that is because it's easier for me to AB the images from within Lightroom. We're going to be working on this image. Those of you that watch my videos know that I often use this specific image whenever I'm doing a video on any type of noise reduction application because this image was shot with an ISO of 12,800. If I zoom in, you can see there is a considerable amount of both luminance and color noise. It is an unedited RAW file. I'm just going to click reset over here. So it's not edited at all. And if I open up the detail tab in Lightroom, you see that I have sharpening all the way down and luminance and color noise all the way down. So I am sending an unedited, unadulterated RAW file from Lightroom into Photo AI. To do that, go up to File, down to Plugin Extras, and then at the very bottom, you can see Process with Topaz Photo AI. When I click on that, it will send this Nikon RAW file to Photo AI. And those of you familiar with Photo AI know that it has something called autopilot. So as soon as you open an image up into it, it's going to examine the image and it goes through this process uh, deciding what is needed to be done to the image. Because not only will Photo AI remove noise, it also, if autopilot deems or if you manually do it, it will sharpen the image. It has also like an object or spot removal tool built in. Also, if you do any cropping, you can see there's a crop tool over here, you could increase the resolution from within a uh, photo AI. And uh, you could do all that, but Autopilot for this specific image decided that it just needed noise removed. You can see over the right-hand panel, which looks a lot different now in this version, you can see that it used raw denoise. Now, those of you not familiar with photo AI, uh, you can just drag and move the image around or you could go down here and zoom in with the slider. Whenever you do the, either of those things, it has to re-render the image. So it has to update the preview and you just have to give it a second. Down here is like a little progress area. Um, you could see what, what it's doing at any moment by looking down there. Now you can see it did remove the noise. Um, if you just click with the left mouse button, you can see there's before and there's after. There's before, there's after. I also have some different views down here as well, if you want to try using any of these other views. Um, but we'll stay with the single image view. And I mentioned that Autopilot decided that this just needed raw denoise done to it. Now, if I go over here on the right-hand side and just click on that, you can see this little flyout panel appears. Um, it decided to use the raw normal AI model. You could manually override any of these settings. So if you want to use Raw Strong, just click on it. You'll see Raw Strong has three different sliders, Strength, Minor to Blur, and Remove Large Grain. We'll go back to that Raw Normal. You can see that there's two sliders here, Strength and Minor to Blur. Whenever you're using Autopilot settings, you'll see there's a little dot next to that. So you see that Raw Normal has a little dot. Strength and Minor to Blur have little dots. If you come in and move anything, for instance, if I move Strength up, the little dot gets diminished. It's not as bright as the previous version of the dot. So let's say you just thought that it needs more noise removed. You could just move the strength to the right, you can minor to blur to the right to try to sharpen uh, some of the areas that maybe looked a little blurry. Uh, but overall, this looks pretty good. But as far as the blur is concerned or sharpening is concerned, that is available in Photo AI, Autopilot just decided that this image didn't need sharpening done, but you could manually do it. To do it, go up here and just add enhancement. When you do that, this little flyout panel appears. And again, you could 
remove noise, which it autopilot already did, you could sharpen the image. It has a remove tool. So if there's, you know, something there, a sensor spot or something, you could remove it. Also, if you sent graphics here and after it did denoise or you did sharpening or something like that, and it made the text look funny, you could preserve the text. And as I mentioned, if you do crop the image, there's a crop tool over here in the top right hand corner, and you want to then upscale it to increase the resolution, you could do that here as well. If you did a bunch of stuff to the image and you just want to kind of start over, you could apply autopilot again right here. Uh, but let's just say for the sake of argument that I do want to sharpen this image. So I'll click on sharpen. Again, you'll have this little fly out menu for sharpen. You have four different models, standard strong lens blur and motion blur. And each of those will have sliders that are applicable to that model. Let's stay with the standard model. You could change the strength and you could, um, sometimes if you are making or sharpening an image, uh, you'll be reintroducing noise. So you have minor denoise here, which will help reduce that noise that might be reintroduced when you sharpen an image. Also, this specific image, there's no need for me to sharpen the background. So I could go to selection and it will automatically find the subject in the image and put a red overlay on it. You could see it's the bird. And you could then use this brush to either paint in more. So let's say it under selected, you could add to the selection. If it over selected, you need to erase some, you could erase as well. It will start out in erase mode. You can see the erase is highlighted. You could go to paint mode there. You could change the size of the brush with the slider or use the bracket keys. The left bracket key will make it smaller, right bracket key larger. Also, if this isn't rolled open, just click this little triangle. You could see that you could feather the brush there as well and change the display color um, of the overlay. But it seemed to have find the sub it seems to have found the subject perfectly. So we'll just go back to controls. Again, it's got to update the preview. I think that looks pretty good, and we'll click close. Again, you could add anything else you need to add. You click add enhancement and add things to it. This has changed considerably over the previous versions previous versions. Uh, everything was here kind of laid out and you kind of just went through it. Here it's kind of hidden. It's a little cleaner look. Just click on add enhancement. When you're satisfied uh, with whatever was done, if you're using Photo AI as a standalone app, you will have to save your work. Just click on save and you'll have several different file types you could save it to. I suggest you save it as a DNG file, which is a raw file. Uh, that way you'll keep all those raw attributes that um, will kind of get baked into, let's say, a JPEG or a TIFF or something like that. So when you are using it, though, as a Lightroom plugin, you just have this button here, Save to Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, it is a non-destructive editor, so it's not going to touch the original Nikon RAW file. It's going to create another RAW file, a DNG file. So we'll have two files when we return to Lightroom, the original Nikon RAW file, which didn't get touched at all, and it will have the original or this new DNG file, which will have the noise reduced. And as I mentioned, the reason why I did this in Lightroom is so that I could show you the results, A, B, the results. Now, this is the original Nikon RAW file. So if I zoom in, you can see this, all the noise that's there. And here is our new and improved version from Photo AI. You can see the noise is removed. And is it any sharper? It's hard to tell. I don't think it's much sharper, tell you the truth. But I didn't really like go into those controls and and move them specifically to try to sharpen the image i just was showing you how to find those controls and bring them up because they have changed that workspace quite a bit so here's our noise reduced image and here is our noisy image and it jumped around because i should go up here to view and lock the zoom position and if i lock the zoom position you'll see it won't move so we'll go down here. There's some feather detail here. And there's the original raw file. And that's just lens corrections kicking in. That's why it's it's kind of barreling in the middle. Uh, but you could see that it does look a little sharper. So that's the latest version of Topaz Labs of Photo AI. It's a really a good app. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. I currently don't have a discount or promo code for it. Uh, every now and then they do give me one. And if I do, I'll add it to the uh, description below this video so that if you choose to purchase it, uh, you'll could save some money. But uh, one thing I do recommend, they have fully working free trials. Just download the free trial first 
and make sure that it's something you'll use and that it works better than Lightroom's built-in noise reduction. Um, one thing I found, and part of the reason why I'm doing this series of videos starting next week where I'll be comparing Lightroom's built-in noise reduction to the competition, is I found that Lightroom's built-in noise reduction, actually all the apps, they work great on one type of RAW file, but they sometimes don't work as well on another type of RAW file. For example, I found that Lightroom's built-in noise reduction doesn't work well with Ricoh GR3X files. I have a Ricoh GR3X. It shoots RAW, but Lightroom's built-in noise reduction doesn't work well on it, and I have to use a third-party app to reduce noise on those high ISO images that I might have produced with that camera. Um, but other times, um, a different app doesn't work as well with a specific type of RAW file, maybe a Sony RAW file or something like that. So um, that's part of the reason why I want to do this series to give you an idea of what to do if your specific RAW file doesn't work well in Lightroom. You may want to purchase a third-party noise reduction app for your specific type of raw file because you'll get better results. So hopefully uh, you'll see the first of that uh, series, first video from that series um, being posted next week. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.